five fantastic free Mac applications, starting with Keyboard Clean Tool. I launch it up and it does what it says. It helps you clean your keyboard by locking it up. For those of you that actually clean your keyboard, so I can spam my keyboard all I want, all I want, and it doesn't do anything. Great for cleaning the laptop keyboard or your keyboard if you don't want to have to unplug it. Oh yeah, and if you're freaked out, click to stop cleaning mode. The icon changes color and you can use your keyboard again. See a bunch of random things happen. See, that's why you use keyboard clean tool. And an application that's basically just a GUI for terminal commands is Tinker Tool. All these little options are built in terminal commands that you can run. There are so many goofy things Mac OS has that I just disable. For instance, by default, you can't do this. Pretty bad. All I have to do is open up Tinker Tool or run this terminal command if you don't want to download Tinker Tool, and there you go. You can now spam letters all you want. A couple of things that just bug me if I don't have them enabled is use dim to icons for hidden applications and disabling the delay when showing and hiding the dock. So I have my dock hidden by default just because it kind of gets in the way sometimes. And you put your mouse down there, it shows up immediately. And by default, you put your mouse down there and you have to wait like a second. And that just bothers me. Tinker Tool has a bunch of these quality of life settings that I kind of get annoyed if I use a Mac that doesn't have them enabled. I've modified a lot of Tinker Tool settings and there's too many to talk about in this video. And that's why in this week's $1 a month channel member video, I'll be going into detail about all the Tinker Tool settings, but more about that video later. Another great application I use all the time is custom shortcuts. This is basically an alternative way of changing shortcuts on your Mac, and it's way better than the built-in one in system settings. You know what is it, system settings? System preferences was just fine, and I'm not only saying that because I spent a year memorizing literally every single location of everything in system preferences. They just copy-pasted the garbage settings from the iPhone into the Mac anyway. It's not what we're here for. But sure, you could go to system settings, go all the way down to keyboard, dig through it, go to keyboard shortcuts, go all the way down to whatever the heck it is, uh, app shortcuts, and then dig down in the garbage things, add a thing, and have to memorize the menu title by it, by exactly typing it in, because it doesn't autofill for you. Or you could just go to custom shortcuts. Say I want to quickly change something in text edit, which I do not have open. Say I want to bind a shortcut to rename. And now if I was doing that in system settings, I'd have to remember to type in capital R and then spell rename correctly, which isn't hard, but you have to type in it exactly. So those three dots. But if you go to custom shortcuts, just type re and then, oh, look, rename bang and then i can make a shortcut f12 okay hit f12 rename my document subscribe or else there you go and it does show up in system settings so i can dig all the way down to keyboard dig all the way to keyboard shortcuts app shortcuts and find text edit there's no fancy icon so th so there's so there's text edit rename f12 right there and i can remove it right in system settings and it'll be removed in custom shortcuts because they're the same way of doing something that i do all the time because i have a stream deck here stream deck here and I change shortcuts all the time. Another great application is Grand Perspective. It scans your entire drive and then it shows you an overview just like this of all the stuff stored on your drive. And depending on how many files you have in your system, it might take a while to scan. In Grand Perspective, each block represents a file on your drive. And of course, the bigger the block, the bigger the file. And the big groupings of blocks right here, like this one's my pictures folder and this one's my movies folder, they represent the folders. I can see my movies folder is 107 gigabytes. I can move my focus up one by using command left bracket and see my entire home folder is 406 gigabytes. And I did notice while preparing for this video that there's a hidden file in my home folder taking up 714 megabytes. That's files for the Lunar Minecraft client that I deleted. I used the free application App Cleaner to get rid of it, but it obviously didn't delete this hidden file in my home folder. So I could either reveal it in Finder in Grand Perspective and it would reveal that hidden file in my home folder. But if I go to my Macintosh HG, go back to my home folder, it's gone again. And of course, you can enable seeing hidden files on your Mac by using Shift Command period. And there you go. There's all the hidden files in my home folder and it will reveal them globally. But I can just delete that hidden file, empty trash, and it's gone. And I do believe Grand Perspective complements the built-in manage storage feature in system settings. And you have to navigate to general about, scroll all the way down, storage settings. It's kind of buried now. It used to be on the about this Mac section. They kind of ruined the about this Mac section and made it more difficult to find things for some reason. But that's Apple for you. You can still access that same functionality that was there before. And depending on who you are, you might be like, Grand Perspective looks confusing and stupid. Why would I ever use it when I have this? The built-in one doesn't work for external drives, which is important for some crazy person like me that has like 
eight external hard drives that are like eight terabytes each and you, you need to manage storage somehow and also just getting a quick visual representation of your entire drive and saying okay this is a big block right here it's so my photos library don't want to delete that but it's good to know it takes up this much storage in representation of everything else that's taking up storage on my drive grand perspective is free on their website in three bucks in the mac app store i'll put both links down below i encourage you to buy it on the mac app store to support the developer it's a great application i use it all the time saving the best for last is going to be tot tot lives in your menu bar right up here and it's basically a little application for capturing text ideas you might have I use it all the time it's also on the iPhone but it's not free on the phone I believe it costs ten dollars but it is free on the Mac and pretty much once you get the Mac version you're gonna be like I need this on my phone I don't care how much it costs I just want to buy it and to some people that may seem like an overreaction for an app that's basically a text edit document that lives in your menu bar but to me it's much more than that you can use command one through seven to navigate between the different dots and I have community poll ideas for my channel that I keep in this document for some reason don't ask me why it's the sixth one pretty much apart from that I capture everything in this main page here and this is real things that I've captured ideas I've had in a given moment where crap I got to get out my phone and just type it in or I just use my hyper key plus up arrow and just open taught really quick hit enter two times and then and make sure I'm not imposing on another line and just write my idea and whatever I have thought of this captured hit escape key or command W they work the exact same way in taught there's also a couple pro tips like command s actually saves it instantly to cloud even though it's saves it automatically and you can do command shift s to export your tot as a text edit document you can open it up and have the contents of your tot page you can also open up tot and drag it to the side so it'll be a separate window you can resize it like any other window it's wonderful because you can open pages and if you're working on an essay or you're just trying to reference your tot notes you can do that instantly and then just close tot and it'll be right available in the mini bar when you need it one thing is that it doesn't remember the size it previously was which is kind of annoying to me but you can just use option and resize the edges of the window and you can get it roughly how it was before and just close tot open it up bang and you do have the keyboard shortcut for tot as hyper key plus up arrow which is basically a remapped caps lock key i used that with carabiner elements another pro tip there but you can use any combination you want something that's natural where you're easily able to activate and then instantly start typing watch how quickly they can activate tot and just instantly start typing instant that's the thing you're capturing an idea here that's why it's so great Todd also has shortcut support i whipped up this quick shortcut that gets your clipboard and puts it right in Todd. and say firefighters use wetting agents to make water more wet okay so i want to put that right in Todd. i'll run that shortcut with f2 and it should appear right there there you go say i want to copy this fact that a running amok is recognized as a medical condition copy that hit f2 and then it is right in top a better way to capture is if you're just reading an article or something and you see something you might want to revisit later just to whip up a shortcut hit a key and it's great i'll put a link to this shortcut down below so that's it five fantastic free mac applications drop a like and subscribe or your bad links everything i talked about will be down in the description and this week's one dollar a month channel member video is going to be going into great detail about all the apps i mentioned in this video including the bonus ones plus some others that relate to these apps and how i use them all the tips and tricks it's over a half an hour long video and if you missed last week's video one dollar macbook that was rare i bought it on ebay and restored it that link is right here and watch it or you're bad thank you for watching everyone oh, goodbye